In this video, we're going to look at linear approximations to find the square root of 10, but you could do it for the square root of 17, the cube root of nine, whatever it is that you're interested in. Okay, a linear approximation is just a fancy name for a tangent line. Okay, um, since I wanna do the square root of 10, that's telling me two things. It's telling me that my function is the square root of x. So that's what I'm gonna be putting a tangent line to is the square root function, cause it's a square root. If this was an ln, I'd have ln. If this was a cube root, I'd have cube root. Okay, the next thing is, is that um, I don't wanna put this tangent line at zero or one. I wanna get as close to 10 as possible that's a perfect square, okay? So the closest perfect square to 10 is nine. So we're gonna do this and we're gonna put a tangent line at x is nine, and if x is nine, the square root of nine is three. So the whole point of this is to pick a value that you know. So if that was the square root of 12, I would either use nine, three, or I'd use 16, four. So you're always gonna choose your perfect square closest to square root 10. If it was the cube root, you choose a perfect cube. Okay, so let's go ahead and find this tangent line. So to find a tangent line, I do the derivative, okay? And then I plug in my x, and I'm gonna get a slope of one-sixth. One-sixth, okay, great. Now, my tangent line, I'm gonna have y minus three equals one-sixth x minus nine. Let's clean it up. Okay, so 1 6 times 9 is a negative 3 halves or a negative 1.5. When I add 3 over, it's going to be a positive 3 halves or a positive 1.5. Okay, now to make sure that everybody knows what we found, what this is, is this is my linear approximation. So we usually rename it L of X. The other thing that I'll do is I'll take that and I'll also take that function and I'll go, okay, what we just found is that 1 6 plus 3 halves is approximately equal to the square root of x near x is 9. Okay, so to me, this is like a user's guide. So if I hand it to somebody, they're like, oh, okay, this line is going to approximate this function near 9. Okay, so if you want to know the square root of 10, I'm going to plug in 10. Okay, so, so old school for just for a second, because obviously we can put this on our calculator, but back in the um, 17, 1800s, all that time, 10 6 is the same thing as 5 thirds. Actually, let's leave it as 10 6. And let's call this 9 6. So this would be the same thing as 19 6, which is the same thing as 3 and 1 6, which is 3.16 repeating. So that's what the square root of 10 equals. So what would have happened is in a book of values, it would have had that the square root of 10 is approximately 3.16 repeating. Okay, now, what is the actual? Well, the actual is just take your calculator and figure out what the square root of 10 is. And if I take my calculator and plug in the square root of 10, I get 3.16227. Oh, ho, ho. okay. So we're really sinking close. Woohoo! All right, that should happen for the most part because we stuck close to our value of nine, okay? So um, being close to our value means that it's gonna be good. And the square root function doesn't grow very quickly. Um, once you get to past you know, the initial curve, it's kind of flat for a while. So what's happening, because it's flat for a while, is that this um, line actually closely models this function for quite a bit. Okay, now in your homework, it'll ask you to figure out the percent error. So that's basically saying how close these are to each other. And you basically just take um, your 
Um, there's a formula in the book. So if you want to know the percent error, it is 100 times um, your estimate. So the 3.16 repeating minus the actual divided by the actual. And what you're going to see is that this is ridiculously close. Like we are on it. Okay. So that is how you use a linear approximation to find, in this one, the square root of 10. All right, good luck.